Welcome back. Today's topic is kettlebell versus dumbbell training. So as you probably know by now, Kettlebell Emma is all about kettlebells, but you might be wondering why, and it wasn't just an arbitrary choice. And you might more specifically be wondering, why should I pick kettlebells instead of dumbbells? So at the end of the day, they are both weights that are commonly found in all gyms and can be used for a myriad of similar movements. So why pick one or the other? First, let's start with the obvious differences. Physically, they look different. You can see what they look like right here. The kettlebell is round and the dumbbell is rectangular. Basically, the kettlebell has a weight hanging in the middle of it and the dumbbell has the weights fixed on the sides. They also have different handle placement. So the kettlebell has this hook grip handle that is above the weight, and it allows for a one and a two-handed grip. The dumbbell, on the other hand, only has a short handle in the middle between the two weights, and it only has room for one hand. The third way they are different is the construction. Um, this doesn't really apply to the use of it, but if you're making an investment, it's good to know. A real kettlebell is a solid piece of cast iron, and they will literally outlive you. It might get rusty, but it will be there long after you are. Gory, but true. Um, a dumbbell, on the other hand, while they can be good, have solid construction, they're usually a combination of metal and rubber, and over time that rubber does start to break down and chip off. Just not as much of a long-term investment if you are really harsh on your weight. So what does this mean for you as you're reaching for a piece of equipment? Well, there are five major differences between kettlebells and dumbbells that I'm going to talk about today. The first difference is the variety. So there are way more exercises that you can do with kettlebells than dumbbells. Every single dumbbell exercise can be done with a kettlebell. So for starters, squats, deadlifts, lunges, presses, curls, extensions, all of those kind of grinding strength movements where you would just hold those dumbbells down by your sides or hold them up in front of you. You could do them all with both dumbbells and kettlebells. But then you have a whole selection of kettlebell specific exercises, such as the kettlebell swing, the kettlebell clean, the kettlebell snatch, the push press, the clean and jerk. We'll get into this a little more later, but there are actually a whole group of specific exercises that were created only to be done with the kettlebell. So you really unlock an entire vault of exercise that way. And in addition to there just being more exercises, it is a more the kettlebell is a more dynamic tool because you can hold it in one or two hands. So pr there's pretty much only one way you can hold a dumbbell. You get it by the middle handle and you hold on to it. But there are four ways you can hold a kettlebell. You can hold it in a front rack where it's sitting behind your wrist up here. You can hold it in a goblet rack where you're holding it between both of your hands. And then you can have it in front of you in a suitcase grip with just one hand, or you can hold on to it with both hands. So this dynamic grip just allows for more exercises and more exercise variation. My second reason for why kettlebells are better than dumbbells and a big difference is that you just don't need as many kettlebells. So as I mentioned, you can hold that kettlebell in a lot of ways and that the variety of grips are going to challenge your muscles in different ways. This means that one weight can feel very different depending on how you hold it. So if I'm gonna hold a weight in two hands in a goblet rack, that feels a lot lighter than holding one in a front rack, right? Because both of my hands are doing the work. So I can immediately get twice as much use out of it that way. But then what the front rack is going to challenge my arms more, the goblet rack's going to challenge my core more, and just at the end of the day, you're going to get way more mileage out of one kettlebell than you would out of a similar weight dumbbell. So for example, I only owned a 35 pound kettlebell for years. I mean like two or three years. Pretty much right until quarantine, I only had one kettlebell at home. And with that weight, I was able to do all of these exercises. The double-handed swing. Um, this means this weight was kind of light for me, so I could use these swings for cardio by doing 20 or more per set. Then I could do single arm swings to work on my swing form. I would focus on fewer reps and improve my strength. I could do single arm cleans, which is a serious glute and arm workout, as well as a kettlebell skill. 
could work on goblet cleans and this is where you pick them up with two hands and because this was a lighter weight for me i could go for more reps and therefore get more cardio and conditioning you can work on the kettlebell specific skill the snatch which focuses on tons of strength and power and i get was able to do that with this 35 pound bell because i was working on my single arm swings and cleans and that's a progression I can use it for the push press. This weight's a little heavy, 35 pounds is a little heavy for me just to grind straight up in a strict press, but the push press uses the legs a little bit, so I'm able to use my 35 for push presses. You can also do front squats where you're holding one of, I use that one 35 pound weight, holding it right here for an offset front squat, which challenges my grip, core, arms, and balance in addition just to the normal squat benefits. I can use it for suitcase lunges, front rack lunges, all sorts of different lunging exercises which create different challenges depending on how I'm holding the weight. While a 35 is not really a rewarding deadlift weight for me, I can use it for single leg deadlifts and a lot of different single leg deadlift variations. That's a great way of leveraging whatever weight you have. If it feels too light, remove a leg, it's going to get a lot harder. We also, on that unilateral leg work, have the rear foot elevated split squat. You can hold the weight down in front of you, which I do, or I can rack it up in a front or goblet rack three different exercises, three different challenges. I also use my 35 for chest presses with a normal grip, with a hook grip. There's tons of bent over row variations I use it for, single arm renegade rows, bicep curls. It's a little heavy for me for tricep extensions, but eventually after working on all of those push presses, I will be able to stretch press it. So as you can see, I can basically do every single exercise and have it be valuable and worth my time with just that one 35 pound weight. Now that is tiny. It doesn't take up much space at all. It's not a huge investment. You can get a 35 pound kettlebell for maybe 60 to 90 bucks with shipping. And that one tool is going to get me a total body workout and a dynamic workout. The other reason you don't need many kettlebells is because many kettlebell movements are skill-based and they are meant to be mastered on one side at a time. So the swing, clean, push press, snatch, and Turkish getup are all meant to be mastered with a single bell. And then you can move on to doing it with a double bell. You can also do all, almost all of those exercises by holding it in two hands or in one hand. So just those very few exercises can be mastered in so many different ways with just one weight. On the other hand, a dumbbell or dumbbells work better in pairs. It's just a little awkward to only work with one dumbbell because of the static way you hold it. With dumbbells, you really just need to have more smaller weight increments in order to move up because there's very little variety in how you can hold it, right? When I hold those dumbbells, I'm holding them right in front of me and the challenge is pretty static. So just for an example, when you walk into a gym, you'll notice that the dumbbells, they start from like literally two and a half pounds and go into the hundreds. And there is a two and a half to five pound incremental increase between each and every weight, right? We have our 30, 35, 40, 45. We go all the way up by increments of five pounds. Whereas kettlebells, the kettlebell rack is gonna be much smaller and those increments tend to be seven to 10 pounds. And this isn't because gyms are skimping on their tools. It's because you just genuinely don't need as many weights of kettlebells because one bell allows you to get a much bigger challenge out of it and therefore you can jump up to a higher weight more quickly. The third reason why kettlebells are different than dumbbells, and I mentioned this before when I was talking about variety, is the kettlebell specific exercises that are available to you. And now these are ballistic exercises, meaning they're kettlebell exercises done for power. They are literally happening at a higher velocity than a normal grinding exercise for strength, and therefore you need the specifically shaped kettlebell handle in order to grip it and be able to move quickly to get through these exercises. So those ballistic exercises are the kettlebell swing, the kettlebell clean, the kettlebell clean and jerk, the kettlebell clean and push press, and the kettlebell snatch. So let's take the swing for example. I can swing my 79 pound bell because I can wrap my hands around the handle. So when I go to hike and project that bell, I'm actually using momentum from my hips to fling the bell out in front of me. And it's that very firm hook grip I have on the handle that prevents the bell from just flying forward and then thumping down on the floor. Now, as with all kettlebell exercises, people have created a dumbbell version of it. 
When you do a dumbbell swing, what they do is they hold on to the weighted end of the bell by grabbing onto that rubber bit and getting your fingertips around it. And your fingertips are really what is holding that kettlebell in place. So just for an experiment, I picked up my 25 pound dumbbell and tried to do dumbbell swings and it started to slip after just a few. There's no way I could do a 79 pound or 80 pound dumbbell swing. That just wouldn't happen. So that kettlebell handle allows you to hold onto the kettlebell tightly and move faster for a higher number of reps, ultimately improving your power output and your cardiac output. You can just get so much more out of those exercises and move way quicker and get more. They're just more beneficial. Fourth reason that kettlebells are better, this wasn't really a why kettlebells are better than dumbbells video, but the fourth reason why kettlebells are better than dumbbells is they help to improve your core strength and stability. And you've probably heard it before that kettlebells are good for your core, and it's true. The unique shape of the bell immediately demands that you turn your core on while holding it in either the front or the goblet rack. Both, and both racks require the same setup. Before you even pick up that kettlebell, regardless of the rack, you need to set up the same way and engage your core. So you start by standing with a neutral spine. Then you send the bottom of your ribs towards your hip bones, engage your ab wall, send your tailbone towards the floor, and squeeze the glutes. Now the core is on, you pick up or clean your weight, and once it's up, no matter if it's in a front or goblet rack, you need to send your elbows straight down, pull the shoulder blades down the back, squeeze the lats and now your core is on and you're ready to move. No matter how you're holding the kettlebell, you must be engaging your core in order to properly support it. So it's a bit like a chicken, the chicken and the egg. You have to have a strong core to use kettlebells, but kettlebells will give you a strong core. Really important to do accessory core stabilization and strengthening work, be work before each workout. But the kettlebell is ultimately going to take all of that core stabilization and strength to the next level. So while you can bring that same awareness to a dumbbell and holding a dumbbell, the heavy weighted ends of a dumbbell make the wrist and the forearms take the brunt of the stabilization. Also, those weights are often resting on the chest or shoulders for stability and you just lose a lot of the core engagement or it's not required to perform an exercise properly. So dumbbells just, they don't give you as much core. And we always wanna get the most out of each of our exercises. By demanding that your core be engaged and active in a kettlebell exercise, it's just a more efficient exercise and you're getting more out of it. So the final reason that kettlebells and dumbbells are different and kind of the benefit to you is that kettlebells bring creativity and badassery to your workouts. There are so many different ways you can train with kettlebells and bring it into your programming. First of all, it can be very skill specific programming, especially in the beginning when you're learning how to do kettlebell exercises, you're going to want to focus on those and work on specific movement patterns. Dumbbells, not so much. There's not as much to learn, so you don't need to like get as specific and you can't make your workouts as targeted. Kettlebells are so dynamic and you can do so many kettlebell exercises that you can program your workouts as either total body or you can do it as upper lower splits, push pull, squat press, you know, whatever kind of programming format you wanna have, kettlebells lend themselves to it. Next, the kettlebell workouts can be programmed as either HIIT, strength, or cardio conditioning. You can basically do every single workout format and tempo with kettlebells between the grinding or strength exercises that kettlebells are good for and the ballistic powerful exercises that you can do with kettlebells, you can really do any kind of programming. And finally, the last big way you can really be creative with your programming is through kettlebell complexes and flows. Both kettlebell complexes and flows are ways that you string exercises together and you don't put the weight down between the different exercises. So you are literally flowing from one to the other. You can see here with a kettlebell flow that you are doing one repetition of an exercise and going directly into the next. And by flowing from one to the next, you have to have a tool that allows you to change the position of the bell throughout the movement flow. And you can really only do that with a kettlebell. So I hope this list was helpful in understanding the differences between these two tools. In short, dumbbells are a pretty static tool and the kettlebell is a very dynamic one. But the most important thing to note is if you wanna learn how to do any kettlebell specific exercises, you should work with a kettlebell coach who is certified in kettlebell training. 
it is a very technical and very skill driven uh, way of training. So if you don't have somebody who knows what you're doing, you could easily get hurt. And there's lots of common issues people encounter like bruised back of the wrists, you know, feeling like they're feeling it in the lo their lower back. And these are things that shouldn't be happening. But if you're not working with somebody who can give you good directions, you'd never know. I learned how to do kettlebells from really wonderful, strong first kettlebell coaches. And I have continued to do years of continuing education. That is how I learned how to bring kettlebell information to you. So if you are interested in getting kettlebell coaching, please check out my website right here. You can see all the different ways I work with people all around the world, virtually and in person to teach them how to master kettlebells. Good luck and I hope this list was helpful. And if you haven't already bought any kettlebells, I hope I changed your mind and convinced you to go buy some.